I'm going to give a quick presentation on the progression of degenerative disc disease by this 44-year-old uh, uh, patient. Uh, 2007 had an MRI. There's a sagittal view of the lumbar spine. Have a disc herniation. At the time, the patient wasn't that obese. The subcutaneous fat is about three centimeter. The disc herniation was later resected through a L5 laminotomy and discectomy. They took out the disc out. But uh, this is 2012. 2007, 2012, the disc has been resected. 2007, 2012, 2007, 2012. But you can see the um, subcutaneous fat has a lot more. So a patient have been gaining weight, have, been, have not been uh, physically active, or, or at least uh, taking in more than what he can use up the energy-wise, so build up uh, subcutaneous adipose tissue. And then the building up the sub uh, the fat in the subcutaneous fat uh, also built up in the belly too so that would result in inferior vena cava um, relative obstruction so the back pressure uh, the, dra the venous drainage is now good you can see the edema in the subcutaneous fat um, and also you can see the further degeneration of other disc levels before after before after before after for example, here in this L34 disc and L45 disc, there's degenerated disc before. Now you can see some white area here and here. They are they are tear of the disc. They are further tear. You can see the there is more lordosis. The alignment is slightly different than before. Patient always lie on flat on the MRI, so the changes are, are due to uh, increase in lordosis and further disnarrowing at L5-S1 level here. Uh, this is 2013, 2012 to 2013. Not much changed except the uh, position of the body is slightly different. The subcutaneous fat, I think the difference is due to positioning. Uh, there's not much difference, but still the subcutaneous edema is still there uh, versus before, there's not much edema. Now there is. Uh, 